In this video we're going to discuss uh, some problems in, in the graphical point of view of derivatives and uh, how can we classify in um, how can we classify derivatives and how can we classify uh, also um, functions and get the derivative function in the derivative graph from the information from the original function. Now uh, the first problem here is uh, we're going to determine uh, the signs and so we have this function here and then the function f of x so we want to determine uh, what are the signs of um, this to th this 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 point over here so we can classify this as um, positive zero or negative okay so first we're going to start with f prime of minus two so do you see we're here in f prime of and, and minus two we're at this point uh, you can see that the tangent line is doing this so this is a positive tangent line so we're going to have a positive derivative okay if we go to zero now, in zero the image is over here. So now in zero the tangent line is doing this. So that's a negative tangent line. It's a negative slope. So negative slope of the tangent line. In uh, 4.5, uh, we are around this point over here. And so you can see that the tangent line is like this. And um, this is a positive slope of the tangent line. F of minus 3. F of minus 3. Now, minus 3 is this point. So you can see that this is, um, this is a tangent line that is flat. It's flat over here. So that is going to be a 0. Okay. Similarly, um, here in minus 1, I will have also a 0. That's not in there. But, um, but that's also the case in, in minus 1 and in 4 we will have a zero tangent line, zero slope, and so there will be a zero derivative. F prime of 2 though, uh, if we go over here, notice that this is also, uh, this is not the, the, the mountain top, or, but this is still really flat. So over here, uh, we, we have some sort of flat tangent line and we also have that this is a zero okay so that's one way of knowing the signs of um, the derivative points now let's uh, continue and go for a second problem in this problem uh, we're going to sketch the graph of uh, the derivative of h of x given that we have the h prime of x given that we have the h of x um, the h of x uh, function and so first notice that we can find the points where this is flat so this is flat here at this point this is flat here at this point and this is flat here at this point so on those points i can put a zero over here so i can put a zero here on the graph of the derivative, I can also put a zero. Uh, let's say next to next to this line over here, so corresponding to this, and uh, finally I can put a zero here. So those are the zeros of the uh, derivative function. Now let's take a look at the signs. So if I'm going to take a look at the signs, notice that the slopes over here are negatives because they're coming in this direction and then it changed to be over here positive so if it's negative if it was negative and it changes to positive i can believe that the function is doing something like this okay it was first um it was first negative then it changed to positive and notice that over here is going to change to negative again all this time is negative until this point so um so first here it changed to positive and it probably does this and it changes to be negative up to this point so this is going to do something like this and then notice that later it's going to change to be positive again in this point in this point everything here is positive in the tangent line so it's, it's going to do something like that 
So it's not exact because I don't know uh, specific points of the derivative, but just from knowing the signs and where it's cutting with, with zero, I can guess the behavior of the derivative function. Now let's do a couple more of examples of this. Now, on this scenario, in the X scenario A, uh, we don't really have uh, that the function is going to zero in anywhere. We don't have a clear zero, but we can see that this function is always negative. Notice that these slopes are always negative and uh, they're going to zero when um, this is going to infinity. So it's always negative. It's always negative. Notice um, negative, negative this point. So probably it can do something like this. I don't know. But when it's going to infinity, this tends to be flat. So then later it's doing something like this. So this could be one, but I will aim to do uh, something a little bit that make more sense. Uh, from the point of view of behavior, probably is just a function that does this. Like a reflection of this. Negative, but always going to zero at the end. Maybe a little bit closer to zero. Yeah, something like this. Notice that this, um, this function here is very, very flat. So that says that the derivative also is going to go very, very close to zero. In this case, uh, we have the opposite situation. Um, notice that um, we have positive, positive, positive here, positive, 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 and then it's going to zero when we're going to minus infinity. So um, positive, positive, and going to zero when it's going to minus infinity. It actually tells me um, it actually tells me that it's going to have some sort of behavior like this over here. But now notice that this is positive, positive, and it's going to infinity when we get closer to zero. So going to infinity when it gets closer to zero, it means that it's also doing something like this. So this is um, the derivative function of this is very similar to what we have um, before. And this is an area, notice that... Um, in from from this part uh, now we have positive slope positive slope positive slope but going towards zero and infinity but this is positive going from minus infinity you see you, you, this this is slopes are every time going horizontal but they're closer to minus infinity so the actual derivative of this function is likely something very similar something like this Oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, so this is positive, positive. So and and this is, um, so it needs to be like this. Positive going to zero. And the slope is getting flat, 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 flat. So um, is, if you notice the way that this is going, this is a very large slope and then it's decreasing, 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 decreasing. So this this is coming from infinity up to zero. So this is going to be the, um, the function of the derivative. Everything is positive. So it means that positive over here, positive over here. Notice that I'm talking about positive because I'm above the x-axis. So this above the x-axis is positive, and everything below is negative, all right? And so that's the solution for uh, problem two, the sketching of uh, this derivative function. Let me now transition to a couple more of examples. Let's think about this question. Um, we have a function f of x, and then we want to sketch uh, the function f prime, but uh, we want to also answer when the limit when x goes to a failed to assist, where uh, the function f of x fails to be continuous, where the function fails to have a derivative. The first two 
we already uh, are used to finding the answer. Uh, so where the limit fails to assist, we can see this in the graph, the limit only fails to assist at x equals 2 because the limits on um, the right side and the left side are not going to be uh, the same, so the limit failed to assist. Now, where the function fails to be continuous, the function fails to be continuous at my, uh, 0, but also at 2, because there's holes in here and there's a jump in here, so that's a discontinuity issue. Now, where the function fails to have a derivative is in 0, in 2, because it's not continuous. If it's not continuous, then uh, we have no derivative, but also at the, the point minus 4. Notice that at minus 4, we have a peak, but this peak is not smooth. So if we approximate the tangent line by this side, we're going to have a positive slope, and this side is going to have a negative slope. So the two limits are not going to agree, and there's not going to assist a derivative in there. Okay, so what that means in terms of the graph? Well, we're going to have a hole in here. We're going to have a hole also in um, the image of um, we're going to have a Im uh, the image of zero. But currently, um, currently, I'm just placing where are we going to have a hole, and we're also going to have a hole in two. Uh, I'm not saying these are zeros. I'm saying that we're going to have a hole in there. Okay. So this is just I remember. Now. <laughs> Notice that this has um, this has a line, so I can calculate uh, the slope of the tangent line of this of these two things. But notice that this is um, in one is uh, in minus six is one, so f of minus six is one, and also f of five, f of minus five is two. Okay, so from from these two points, I can get the slope. Uh, so in case we didn't do this before, I'm going to say this is y2, this is y1, and this is x2, and this is x1. So the way to get the slope um, is doing f of minus 6 minus f of minus 5, and uh, minus 6 minus minus 5. Okay? But this is going to give me uh, 1 minus 2 over... Um, and this is minus 6 plus 5. So this is minus 1 over minus 1. So this is 1. So positive slope as expected, and it's going to give me a 1. So that means that my derivative is going to be like this. It's going to be the 1 constant function. And it's going to have a hole in here. Okay. Now... I can do the same thing for this uh, function, okay? Although I'm going to say really quick that this uh, slope is going to probably be minus 1. You can see that they're going directly uh, on the corners of each of the, each of the, um, of the grids. So that means that we're going to have a 1 uh, situation. You can see that with f of minus 2 being 1. And also f of minus 3 uh, being 2. So you use these two points, uh, f of minus 3, f of minus 2, over minus 3, minus, minus 2. And so you have um, 2 minus 1 over minus 3 plus 2. And so this is 1 over minus 1, so minus 1. So you can see the slope of this line. Uh, be minus 1. And because of that, uh, then at this point we have the hole over here. Right? We have a hole in there. There's no derivative in this point. And um, we're going to have a hole in here as well. Okay? Now, this function is not a line. So I'm going to leave this one for last, and I'm going to work with this one. Now, uh, this type of function it also has, um, we also can get 
uh, the tangent line in the same way, the, the slope in the same way. So let, let me erase over here. Oops. Okay. All right, so uh, I can have the, this line uses a couple points. Um, let me let me say um, in uh, two is two. Uh, I know that is not exactly defined in there, but uh, we could kind of assume that that line is in that point. So if we say uh, f of two is two, uh, we can use that point. And uh, let's see what other points is comfortable. Uh, we can use four. Four is minus one. So f of four is minus one. So let's see a line with these two points where it leads. So f of two minus f of two, f of four minus f of two, four minus two. And uh, so f of four minus one, and f of um, f of two in theory should be two. And uh, this is four minus two is two, so minus three halves. So this is a negative slope, and this is what it should be on this. So minus three halves. So minus three half is minus one point five. Uh, so that means over here. So that means that this is going to be this constant function over here. Okay. And so now we have most of um, most of the function. We just need this little piece. One thing that we can analyze is that we have a flat in here. We have a flat in one. So this is going to be the only zero that we have. Okay. And um, now, if we take a look at the slope of this piece, notice that this is uh, negative here, positive here. So we have this kind of transition. So before one, uh, we have negative, and then we have positive. Okay. Uh, so um, we can kind of write this out as something like this. We need to put a hole here. So positive on this side, negative in this side. There's no, re no reason why they need to join, but they join over here. So I'm going to assume that they're kind of joining. They're kind of joining over here. Since the limits, they turn to be the same, mostly the same. This is notice something negative and this is variating to something negative. So I'm going to assume that function is doing something like that. It transitions from something negative to something positive and I don't know where this is going to end up being, but we can assume it's something like this. Okay, so this is a graph of h prime of x for this scenario. Hopefully that explains a little bit better how did you get actually um, the constant from um, a slope, a line, a, an initial function that is a line. How do you get the slope for the tangent line?